The seventh I am statement of Jesus, which is found in John's Gospel, is a message more for believers than for unbelievers. The other six I am statements invite us to come into a relationship with Jesus, to discover all the wonderful benefits of such a relationship with him, even life itself. But this statement invites us to remain in that relationship. So John 15, 1 to 17 says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you're like a branch that's thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I've kept my father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love is no one than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so whatever you ask in my name, the father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. The seventh I am statement of Jesus tells us that Jesus is the vine or the true vine. Verse one, I am the true vine and my father's the gardener. And verse five, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So using the image of the vine and the branches, Jesus tells us how essential it is that we remain connected to him. He tells us, hear why it is so important and he tells us how to do it how we can remain in him the image itself makes it clear why we should remain in Jesus and it's an easy image for us to grasp the image of a grapevine it should be healthy and full of juicy fruit bursting with goodness and flavor that's the ideal image and that's what God intends for us and in that image we're the branches and it's obvious from that image, isn't it, why we should stay connected to the vine? Because, as Jesus says in verse four, no branch by itself can bear fruit. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. And verse six, if you don't remain in me, you're like a branch that's thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire to be burned. Of course, we can we can see that, can't we? We wouldn't expect a branch that's been separated from a vine, which is where it gets all its sustenance from, to live apart from that vine, let alone to bear any fruit. Jesus says, that's how your relationship with me works. You have to stay connected to me if you're going to be sustained by the life that flows from me. Apart from me, Jesus says, you can do nothing. Well, of course, people not connected with Jesus can do things. What Jesus is saying that is that apart from him, we can't do anything of an eternal value. We can't do kingdom work unless we're in an ongoing and living relationship with Jesus. It's not enough to know his name or use his name or even to call on his name. We have to actually 
be connected to him and living in a true dynamic relationship with him. And it's not enough that we do spectacular or dynamic things for him. We actually have to know him and do what he leads us to do. What we do must flow from a personal relationship with Jesus. Matthew seven twenty one to 23 um, says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who's in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons? And in your name perform many miracles? Then I'll tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. We can only enter the kingdom of heaven and do the will of the Father if we remain in Jesus. Verse 5, if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. And verses 7 and 8, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Just as a branch which stays connected to a healthy vine produces much fruit, if we remain connected to Jesus, we will bear much fruit and our lives will bring glory to God and demonstrate that we really are true disciples or followers of Jesus. Jesus tells us that this is the kind of relationship where we ask for what we want and God answers those prayers. That was verse 16. We're invited to press into a deep, intimate relationship with Jesus, where we sense his heartbeat, where, as Paul says, we have the mind of Christ. It's the place where we have fellowship with him through the Holy Spirit and are being led in our thoughts and desires by him. And there's another benefit or characteristic uh, of that kind of relationship which Jesus describes here. And that characteristic is joy. Verse 11, I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Joy is one of the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit, fruit that is produced through a healthy relationship with Jesus. Think about that healthy branch connected to the vine bursting with rich, tasty fruit. In our lives, that fruit is the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22, 23 says that fruit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Lives connected to Jesus are emotionally healthy and they're attractive to others. And that's God's intention for you and for me, that we would find joy in his presence, that this joy would be obvious and that our joy would not be half-baked, but complete or full. Um, I was watching Bake Off last week and uh, it was bread week and it was Italian bread week. And uh, one of the breads they had to make was a ciapatta um, stick. And um, the problem was they were, you know, the contestants were debating whether they needed to give it a long proofing time and a short bake or a short proofing time and a long bake or what combination of those they should do. And a few of them got it all muddled up and didn't bake their sticks lock their chiapata sticks long enough and they came out the oven half baked and soggy so when those sticks were picked up they just flopped over half baked soggy pale unable to be eaten or sustain anyone and um you know our joy can be just like that sometimes we might wonder how are we going to fix that and Jesus tells us that his joy can be in us and our joy can be made complete and that that joy in us and overflowing from us is a consequence of us remaining in him so Jesus lays out a choice these two realities um, on the one hand trying to live outside of a relationship with him where there's no spiritual life or sustenance where whatever we do, whatever we try, however much effort we put into it, we will fail to achieve anything for God and will in the end prove that everything we've done is worthless. On the other hand, living a life continuing in a relationship with him where we're connected to the source of all life and where we naturally produce 
spiritual fruit, fruit which grows because of that connection, where there will be much fruit, fruit that will last. Jesus tells us through that relationship, our prayers will be answered. There'll be an infilling and an overflowing of joy and God will be glorified through our lives. So how do we remain in Jesus? How can we stay connected to the vine and be like that? Well, I think the first thing we need to recognize here is that this is an invitation of Jesus, not a rebuke. I realize that some of you, as you've been listening to that description of what a healthy relationship with Jesus looks like, have been getting discouraged, comparing your relationship with this wonderful picture and thinking that maybe you just don't measure up. That's why I'm pointing out that these words of Jesus are more of an invitation than they are a rebuke. Jesus is inviting us to remain in him. And he's saying that when we do that, these things will happen. Our relationship with Jesus will start to look like this. Life will flow from him into us and we will bear fruit. The flowing life and the production of fruit is not dependent on us. It all flows from him. Our job is to respond to that invitation to stay put, to remain connected to Jesus. Jesus makes it clear he's not rejecting us or telling us that we're useless, worthless or rejected by him. We're not meant to twist his words so that we come under some kind of condemnation. It's clear from these words that Jesus wants us to be connected to him. He wants this to be the kind of relationship we have with him. He also tells us that Father God wants this as well. This ideal picture is God revealing his will to us, his intention for you and for me. So how do we stay connected to Jesus? How do we respond positively to this invitation? John 15 verse 10, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I've kept my father's commands and remain in his love. Okay, so we need to keep Jesus's command. So what are his commands? Well, he tells us a couple of verses later, verses 12 to 13. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus then says, if you do that, you're not just servants, you're my friends. Loving others sacrificially is the key to remaining in Jesus, to having this kind of relationship with him, to have his life flowing through us, to bearing much fruit and bringing glory to God. And here's the thing, we can't love like that unless we come into a relationship with him in the first place. We need to be able to draw on his strength and to have his love in us in order to love like him. We need the Holy Spirit at work in us. That's why it's called the fruit of the Spirit. When we've come into a relationship with God through faith in Jesus, rejecting a selfish and sinful way of life, we need to stay there by committing to loving others the way Jesus does and drawing on his strength in order to live that way. That's the kind of dependent relationship a branch has with the vine. You may have noticed that Jesus starts at the beginning of the chapter by saying, remain in me. And about halfway down, he switches to the phrase, remain in my love. These are two ways of saying the same thing. But remain in my love tells us more about the nature of that relationship. It also reminds us that it's not just about us loving other people. It's also about us receiving love from Jesus for ourselves so that we can love other people. In other words, remain in the place where you know you're forgiven, held and loved by Jesus. Stay in the flow of his grace, receiving grace, so that you can also pour out grace from your life to others. We have to stay under the tap or stand under the waterfall and let his grace flow over us and through us. If the pipe gets blocked at either end, that grace will not flow if we get if we close ourselves off to Jesus on the one end of that pipe, we have no grace to pour out at the other end. Or if we stop pouring out grace to other people at that end, grace doesn't flow from Jesus from the other end. Of course, that grace is readily available when we realise what we're doing and turn to him in repentance and faith. We can unblock 
the pipe. Here's a lesson from the kitchen. Don't let your sink or drains get blocked. I wonder if you've noticed when what is designed in our houses to allow water to flow freely through it gets bunged up. There can be such an unbelievable stench. If you've ever had to unblock a drain, you'll know what I'm talking about. And that's what our lives are like when we allow things like resentment and unforgiveness to block the flow of love through our lives. Our attitudes, our words, our actions just start to stink. So Jesus talks about being clean. And that's connected to this idea of loving each other. Verse 3, you're already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Jesus says you're already clean because of me. But you need to remain in me and you need to stay clean. You need to keep yourself clean. The words Jesus has already spoken to us make us clean. And that means the word of forgiveness and cleansing made possible by the cross. That's how we came into a relationship with God in the first place. That's how we were able to get connected through Jesus. But how do we stay clean? How do we continue loving God and loving others the way that Jesus says we should? You know, there's been times when I've messed up in my own life and I've wanted to just reach inside myself and re rewire my inner workings to somehow pull all of the bad stuff out and create in myself a pure heart. But, you know, it's impossible for anyone to do that. And I've cried out to God in those times for him to do that. And it's something I just can't do myself. But these verses remind us that we're not the ones who have to do that. And we're not alone in that battle. Jesus tells us the Father is at work on our behalf. Verses 1 and 2. I'm the true vine and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. God the Father helps us get clean so that we can remain in Jesus and bear much fruit. He does that by pruning us, by cutting away the things in our lives which don't belong. Bitterness, unforgiveness, malice, slander, hatred, jealousy, lust, greed, selfish ambition. All these unloving attitudes which would block that flow of grace and prevent us from bearing much fruit. We may be content with producing some fruit, but God's not content with that. Every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. These verses tell me something very encouraging. The fact that God hasn't finished with us yet. His intention is that we will be like branches loaded with lush fruit, connected to that beautiful vine. God has bigger plans for us spiritually than we realise. Sometimes our lives can get crowded by activities which have no eternal value and when that happens, the joy of a relationship with Jesus starts to wane. Those are times when we need to yield our lives to the Father for him to prune us. It feels great to be clean. It feels great to be in the flow of God's grace. But a continual cleansing and pruning is necessary for that to be the case. Hebrews 12 verse 1, and this is the New Living Translation, says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set out before us. You may find it difficult to physically run, but God's calling us to run spiritually, to be fit and healthy and unencumbered so that we can produce much fruit, fruit which will last. And that will happen if we remain in Jesus, remain in his love and yield to his work in us. There's a great encouragement in this chapter, encouragement to see ourselves as we've never seen ourselves before. No longer slaves, but called friends by Jesus. And in verse 16, chosen and appointed by Jesus to bear eternal lasting fruit. This wasn't even our idea. God had a greater plan, a higher plan for our lives. And he's calling us to step into that plan so that we can experience this abundantly joyful and fruitful life. 
He's calling us by his spirit through these powerful anointed words of Jesus. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Is there something you need to yield to him today in order to remain in him? Let me end the same way that Jesus ends this section of chapter 15 with his words in verse 17. This is my command. Love each other. 